Hey, what's up everyone, Game Dad here, and today we are doing a super simple, no cut, no crazy modification of any kind mod to the original Super Nintendo. Now, back in the day of the Super Nintendo, the Super Famicom, uh, even with the NES and the Famicom, there wasn't so much a region lock as a physical blocking it from going into the slot kind of lock. And what's crazy is Japanese games will play on an American Super Nintendo, no problem, and vice versa. It's just the inside of this has some little tabs that block the games from going in. Well, thanks to my buddy Gary over at Nestorations, he has a whole product line with Nestorations, and he has his channel Rock Solid Productions, but he has come out with a product for this one, the Model 1 SNES and the Model 2 SNES that allows you to make your console region free. Now, this doesn't mean the PAL games will work because those were a bit different in the hardware, but it means that you can play Japanese Super Famicom games on your Super Nintendo. And what's really cool about it is, like I said, it is a no cut mod. You do not have to damage your original console or the innards of it in any way. All you're doing is replacing a couple of little parts in there and you're good to go. So what we're gonna do today is crack this bad boy open. We're gonna take out the stuff we don't need in here anymore and we're gonna replace it with these right here that will allow any game to fit into this cartridge slot. So let's go ahead and dive in and check this out. So it is a super simple process. We're gonna go right here. I have my game bit on there with my iFixit toolkit. We have six screws that we gotta take out of here. That way we can get the shell off. So we're gonna undo all these screws. What's nice about Nintendo consoles that are older is they're significantly easier to get into than the more modern consoles. And they only use a couple different screw types to do it. So that is always much appreciated. But we have six of these game bit screws. I forget the millimeter on these ones, but they are a standard game bit. And they come in basically every kind of toolkit now. But we're gonna get these out. All right, we got one more. As you can see, these screws come out super easy. Sometimes if your console had something spilled on it, there might be like a sticky substance or something like that. It'll make it a little more difficult to get into, but once you get those out, you are good to go. I got one that is being stubborn, doesn't want to come all the way out, but we'll be able to take care of that in a moment. So I'm gonna open this up. There we go. And here's that screw. We'll just kind of push right here. It doesn't want to come totally free. There we go. Now the screw is free. Now, what we need to do is actually nothing to this side of the console. As you can see, mine is kind of dirty. This is not an original console to me, but it's just one I had lying around ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're replacing this piece right here, which is actually attached to this. That's why you end up with two of these because one replaces one, one replaces the other. And what's nice is that you actually don't even need this piece anymore. You don't need the special lock down uh, thing that goes in there when you turn on the power button. So we're gonna switch over to a Phillips head. Got a few screws to take out here. We got two up top. As you can see, they come out super easy or they become loose super easy anyways. There we go. Then we've got one, two, three, four, five more. So we're gonna take this one. None of these want to actually fully come out all the way, it seems. The magnet's not working very well. Hey, I got one. I want to do this. And what we'll be able to do is actually save this screw and washer. That way, if you ever wanted to take this back to original hardware, you could. But what's really nice about this is you're not damaging any of the original hardware. We're going to take this arm out. We're not going to use that anymore. <clears throat> oh, and we have a hidden screw underneath. See if I can actually grab these. There we go. Got that one. That one is not coming yet. We'll be able to lift this and get all the screws out that way. Take this one off. Last one here. As you can see, this is a super quick mod. There is nothing crazy about this at all. We're gonna go ahead and unhook this if it will let me. Let's see here. There we go. Oh, I forgot we got to undo the little spring right here. This is the spring for the reset button that helps it go back. Let's see. Try and get my large hands into here. 
I'm gonna grab some tweezers. Where are my tweezers? Actually, here we go. I'll just use a really small bit on this screwdriver to kind of get down in here and unhook this wire. There we go. So you just unhook that spring. I don't think I need to unhook it from the other side as well. No, it'll just go right down into that hole, maybe. There we go, oh, came off anyways. So there is that whole piece right there. We're gonna take all of these screws out. There's two of them. There's the third one. Okay, so that is all of those. We do need to transfer this little button right here because that helps with the push down of this. It's very simple. Push these little tabs in on each side and the whole thing just pops right out, as you can see right here. And now I don't need that anymore. So I'm gonna take that because this is the new piece for it. I'm gonna put this back in its place. You just kind of slide this in. As you can see, it has been impeccably measured so that everything will work very nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and set that back down. We'll get our spring. We hook it back onto that hook and then we hook it onto that hook. A lot easier to put on than it is to take off. And now, as you can see, our power is sliding and our reset is still spring loaded. Now we're gonna take this piece and there's something that we need to do to it that this piece has built in and that is these posts right here. So he includes them as a separate little thing right here. So we're gonna take these and these kind of just go in place in friction. And this piece goes here. They have little uh, guide keys on them and he recommends doing this at an angle instead of straight on. So you kind of push at an angle those go there and here, super simple to put on. And these, whoop, these are just kind of held in with friction. Now he recommends in his instructional video to, uh, he printed the actual threads into these, but he recommends also going in and driving the screw in just a little bit to start, just to make it a little easier on yourself later on. So I will do it with one of these ones. So he recommends just getting these threads started. He has them printed, but this actually kind of helps really cut them and get them going. So I am screwing this piece in. Oh, I'm just gonna take it off and do it that way because I am already going at an angle. We don't want that. So we're gonna go right here. There we go. There, now it's cutting in there. Ooh, gotta be careful it doesn't move. And he does say, do not do this with a drill uh, because it could mess it up. And obviously we don't want that to happen. So there we go. Kind of get those started. And then I will put this back in place. I'll do the same thing to this other one. Just stick this right here and get it started. I have giant bumbling hands. If you have smaller hands or more dexterity in your hands, you might do better, but this is what I'm working with. So let's see if we can get that lined up. There we go. Just slow and steady wins the race. Cutting in those threads a bit, just to help you get it started whenever it goes back in. So there, those are both pressure fit in there, fit very nicely. Now, he made a note to, uh, to say that this opening goes towards the front. So we wanna make sure that we follow that. And we're gonna put that down in there. Now we have some screws to put back. So I'm gonna line these ones up first. There we go. Now, whenever you do these screws, always remember to give it just a little kick going in the opposite direction. It'll help find those old threads and help you thread it in easily instead of recreating the threads and basically destroying the plastic. So you wanna make sure you get it lined up, kind of take it back a sec and then take it forward. And it just ensures that the plastic doesn't get recut over and over again, which will eventually make the screw holes in this useless. So back, and you'll feel it kind of pop into place whenever you do that. And we do that. I'm gonna put this one with the washer back where it was. 
That way, if I ever need it again in the future, it's there and ready to go. He did mention that he was probably going to make another version of this with the slot so that you can just keep the piece in there. But for now, this is how it is. Got three more screws. Gonna put this one here. There we go. That one is still a little bit tight, even with the reverse threading in the beginning. Got one right here. Now, I don't know what the time is on the camera, but as you can see, this is an insanely quick mod. It is not something that is going to take you a ton of time. It's not something that requires really any skill other than how to use a screwdriver and you know a toolkit with a game bit in it, which like I said, basically any precision toolkit of any kind will come with that nowadays. So you have this and now it's ready to go back onto here. You wanna make sure your power switch is in the off position because that's where your actual power switch will be because it goes right inside of this little square. We're gonna flip this over. Remember, these are just held in with pressure for now. So you don't wanna knock it and bang it around and it end up getting messed up, stuff falling out, then you gotta put it back, all that nonsense. So we're gonna flip this over. We're just going to sandwich that back down into place where it goes. There we go. Let's make sure, yep, our door is opening fine. You can see that sweet purple in there. We're gonna flip this over. Now, I know that Gary is a stickler for doing everything in a cross pattern. Uh, so just to bug him, I'm not gonna go in a cross pattern just because I know it'll bother him. I'm gonna go in a clockwise pattern. So we're gonna get these outer screws. Oh, I don't think I have something lined up. He'll say it's because I didn't wanna go in a cross pattern. There we go. So I'm just gonna drop that down in there and we'll get this one screwed in. There's that one. Now the reason you would go in a cross pattern is that way you apply equal pressure all the way around as you do your tightening. It's just like when you're changing a tire or anything like that. You always do them in a hex pattern. That way it is not off balance. I'm just doing it in a clockwise pattern because I know it'll bug him. There we go. And we'll get this last one. And down she goes. All right, now we have our last two here and that is where our little posts were. So this is why it was nice to kind of get them threaded beforehand to uh, make it easier to start putting these screws in. There we go. And you wanna do these two last because of that pressure fit, because this will ensure that the pressure of the case is actually holding them in place whenever you go to put these in. As you can see, it gets a little tighter at the end and that is because they weren't fully threaded when I was putting this in. I only did enough to start them. So do that little backtrack and start driving that screw. Get that all the way in there. Got some squeaky from the plastic going. And there we go. That is in there. Our eject button is good to go. We have all of this in here. You can see where everything is still in here. You can see our slot right there. But what you can't see now is that these posts are gone. None of these posts that are right here are in the way anymore. And that is what prevents you from putting in a Super Famicom cart because the SNES cart has those little notches on the back. These are all gone. Sure. You can break those off, but then you're damaging original hardware. Here, you're not damaging anything. You just have it ready to go. So let me grab a game and I will show you how this works. So just another example, you can see those lines. So those are keyed so that this thing will go in there. Same with these lines on the front, they're keyed for there. But now I can put this in, still goes in totally fine. Eject, good to go. Now right here, I mean, this was just Bubsy, you know, the greatest game ever, said no one. Here we have a Super Famicom game. This is Ranma 1 half. We put this in and look at that right there. Still works just as good. So that is a Super Famicom game going in no problem. As you can see here on the original, it would be completely blocked. You would never be able to get down to the actual cartridge area like what you can with an actual Super Nintendo. So good to go. 
So as you saw, super, super easy and quick mod to do. A couple pieces you take off of this, put it into here with the new pieces and it's done. And we've got Super Famicom that can go in right there. And then we've also got Super NES. Look at that, works great. Both kinds of games can go in now. And that is all thanks to Gary at Rock Solid Productions and his Nestoration line. Now, like I said, he has it for the original Super Nintendo and he also has it for the, I guess you could call it Super Nintendo Junior, but it's the Model 2, uh, which it, it I wanna say top loader because it looks like the NES top loader, but all Super Nintendos are top loaders. Um, but yeah, it's the second revision of it and it has a slightly different shape to it. So he has a kit for that as well. He also has N64 region mod kits. He has all kinds of different game display holders, all kinds of different stuff. This dude 3D prints so many cool things and a lot of original hardware, including, sorry, Gary, I don't know if you've actually launched this yet, but I had it sitting right here and I'm just gonna talk about it for a second. Uh, he makes dedicated cleaners as well. Now, these do not require a liquid of any kind. They uh, do not require any kind of solvents. They are printed with a special uh, material on it. I forget which what thing it's called, but it's a special material that allows you to clean without using any kind of abrasives or chemicals, which is awesome. This one right here is for the Switch. I think he calls it the Switcheroo. Uh, so it will clean your Switch cartridges on one side, and then it will actually clean the card slot on the other side uh, where you put the games into. And then he also has one for the 3DS, 2DS. And same thing, it will clean the system and it will clean the actual cards, uh, carts themselves. So he has amazing products on there. Again, I'm not sure if you launched this yet, Gary, but you're welcome, you did now. Uh, but super awesome stuff. I will have a link in the description uh, down below for his uh, Square site, that way you can go in. He also has stuff on Etsy. Stuff is a little more expensive on Etsy because of like seller fees and stuff like that. Uh, so it's cheaper if you buy it directly from him. But yeah, super awesome. Oh, and a full disclosure, he did give me the region mod kit for this. I've bought plenty of 3D printed things from him before, but he gave me this region mod, that way I could do a video about it and share it with all of you. And I'm stoked, it's awesome. And this is actually the, uh, the SNES that you all see in my videos, which goes right here. So now that's a region modded one. Did I need it? No, I have a Super Famicom right here. I don't care though. I like having all my consoles be able to play everything because why not? Um, but yeah, if you liked today's video, let me know down in the comments below. While you're down there, please be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons as well as that little notification bell. That way you can alert every time I get a new video coming out. And if you wanna see another recent video, you can check out this area right here. Also, by the time you're seeing this video, I am either at or about to be at the Cleveland Gaming Classic. Definitely come say hi, I will be there. Jay from Square Pegs will be there. Uh, gosh, uh, Huff Manley, if you're into wrestling, he will be there. Uh, I think this one is the one where the entire crew from Halo is gonna be there, I don't remember. Uh, and then there's all kinds of other people, uh, Jay from Square Pegs, uh, John Riggs, um, oh, Dr. Scott, there's gonna be all kinds of people there and it's gonna be a huge show, it's gonna be a great time. Make sure you come check it out at the IX Center in Cleveland, Ohio this weekend. Uh, like I said, depending on when this video comes out, I'll either actively be there for the uh, Friday day or it'll be in a couple of days from now. I don't know if this video is coming out on a Wednesday or a Friday, but I hope to see you all there. And thank you all for watching. As always, I'm Game Dad, and catch you guys later.